Hey there everybody, it's Monday again, so that means it's time for another installment of Mod Monday. Today we're going to be looking at a mod called the Chains Mod, so let's get started. So, the first thing that we have is an item called the Threader, and the way this is made is like so, and the way it works is you place it on a wall and it'll start smoking for a bit. Now, it's currently in a cooldown period. Once it is done with that, it will drop down and look a lot more like a tripwire, like this. Now, the way this works is you can take wool or an iron ingot and right-click on it. It'll start clicking, and when it is done, you will get four string, and it'll enter a cooldown period. So you have to be careful because you might end up placing a block you don't really mean to place. So after that, it goes back into its cooldown period, and you get your drop. In this case, I got some string. But when you use it with an iron ingot, you get something slightly different, though it looks pretty similar. It's called iron wire. Now, what iron wire is used for is creating a couple different things. The first thing is a fiber wire, which is string and iron wire combined. Now, this can be used to create better weapons, and better range weapons specifically. We'll get to that in a moment though. The other thing iron wire can be used for is to create some iron chain links. Now that lets you finally be able to craft some chain, arm chain armor, which is all done the same recipe as normal armor is done. Now what's the benefit of using chain armor instead of iron? Well, it takes about half as much iron as it does to create uh, chain armor than it does iron armor. Specifically, you can create a full set of chain armor instead of a pair of boots and a chest plate. And I'm not sure about the... I'm not sure about all the numbers for armor, but I do know that if you're in survival, a chest plate and a pair of boots will give you four armor pieces, whereas a full chain will give you six? Is that? Yes, that is six. I'm not wearing my glasses. Leave me alone. <laughs> anyway. So I think it might be a little bit better than, you know, trying to make a full set of iron armor. Not a full set, trying to make half a suit of iron armor. But of course, that is if you are kind of scraping at the bottom of your iron supply. Now, as for the range of weapons, you can use fiber wire to create a different kind of bow, a fiber wired bow, which has more durability and does slightly more damage than a regular bow. It will do two, four, and six hearts worth of damage depending on how far back you've drawn the bow. And it is... It's able to be enchanted with the same enchantments as a regular bow. Power, Punch, Flame, and Infinity. But this mod also adds a new weapon called the Slingshot. This can be made with normal string or replace the string with fiber wire to get a fiber wire slingshot. They both use seeds for their projectiles, but you can use other types of projectiles. Now, the basic projectile is going to be regular seeds. However, you can use pumpkin seeds, melon seeds, and cocoa beans in place of regular seeds, and they will do an extra half heart worth of damage. Regular seeds will do one heart worth of damage. So, cocoa beans, pumpkin, and melons will do one and a half. Alternatively, you can use special ammunition. This ammunition is slightly hard to get. You can use spider eyes, um, fire charges, and nether wart. And I don't believe there was anything else. Let me double check. Nope, that was all. So, special ammunition, such as the spider eye, Let's switch over, oops, switch over to 
easy mode so mobs will start spawning. And with a spider, if we use the spider eye, you can see that the spider now has a weird little effect on it. That's because the slingshot temporarily slows your opponents. Come on. Take the correct damage. Now, spiders might be immune to that. Actually, if I remember correctly, spiders are immune to poison. So that was a that was a futile effort. How about your zombies? Eh. Let's just spawn a pig. Why do I ever go away from the test pigs? They always work. Alright, come here, test pig. You will take some spider eye damage. And there you go. It's continuing to take damage because it has been poisoned thanks to the spider eye. And now it's dead. Now, if you were to use a fire charge instead, this one I can test on spiders and other creatures. If you use a fire charge, It's a little bit hard to tell the range. And now it's gone. There we go. <laughs> As you see, the Enderman caught fire and completely spazzed out. As normal people do when they catch fire as well. There we go. A roaring bonfire, thanks to a spider being set on fire with a fire charge. Then there is Netherwart. Now this one is a little bit more interesting because it will give the Wither effect. Die already. Now, an interesting thing to note is that you are able to recollect the ammo of these if you miss them. However, it is very hard to actually see the ammo. If I bounce one off this wall, I think I might be able to s catch a glimpse of one. Oh, there we go. Oh, darn it. Oh, there it is. It's floating in the air for whatever reason. But the ammo will look like this. So it will be very, very hard to find the ammo to recollect. You can, however, recollect it, so... If you really want that ammo back, go ahead and try to find it. Alright, moving on. Aside from those new weapons, there's also... Why is this sideways? There we go, that fixed it. But now this is... Okay, that's kind of weird. I think that might be a bug that's worth submitting. Because it's turning... Other slingshots sideways. Very peculiar. And it's also doing it to the items in the frames. <laughs> oh, that is so weird. Oh, and I broke the frame. Alright, let's get rid of these things. So, another item that has been added is the Garot? Garot? I don't know how this is actually pronounced. I've heard it pronounced di many different ways. I've even, I've even heard it pronounced Garati. So, yeah. If you right-click with it, it does this. However, in order to actually properly use it, you're going to need to turn invisible. And as you see, I am now invisible. And let's see if I can do this to a slime. Do, do, do. Now, I don't really know how invisibility works in Minecraft. It never really seems to work on monsters for me, and I don't see it being able to work with the players because, well, they can see the swirls. Oops. Come on. Maybe I can't do it to a slime. I'll try it with a creeper instead. Hey, creeper, come here. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. And I strangled the creeper to death. 
but upon strangling a creature, you will regain your visibility. How many people can say they strangle a creeper to death? I can. <laughs> anyway. Now, there is one more cool feature that I like about this mod. You can also use your chain links to create an iron chain, which you can take and suspend from any block, like so. And if you right click on the bottom link in a chain, you will drop it down one more block, so that's pretty neat. But you can climb them climb up them. Kind of like a vine in a jungle. But the more interesting thing about these chains, other than their decorative and usefulness, is this block. This is an iron chain elevator block. It is created with a couple pistons and various bits of metal and redstone magic. And with that you can create an elevator. Now, in order to create an elevator, you have to have a block that the iron chain is suspending from, a platform, which has to be all the same material, although you can place different blocks on top of the platform, and it will move those blocks up and down as well. You need a lever to tell it whether it's going to be going up or down. And underneath, you need a chain and a block telling it where to stop. So, if I flip the lever into the up position and right click on the elevator block, I will move up. And if you put it down, you can go down. Now, there is one other mod that I played with before called Better Than Wolves, which also featured elevators. Now, Better Than Wolves elevators were slow as hell. This is significantly faster. However, I do have to say that the Better Than Wolves elevator was a smoother ride. And... Actually, there's not much else I can say about it. I mean, yes, Better Than Wolves elevator was a smoother ride, but I don't believe it offered the same amount of functionality as these ones do. At least last I checked. For example, I can move a cart onto the elevator, and there is one problem which you probably already noticed. Let's flip you into the up position and move up. Now once I move up, the rail goes up, and if I move up further, the rail breaks because it suddenly lost its connection to the adjacent block. Not sure if there's anything that can be done to fix that, but oh well. As you can see, we are moving these blocks up. The T ENT cart is moving up. The rails are moving up. Actually, there's one more thing I needed to do. Plop. There we go. Another neat feature is that you can also put chests on this. And the chests will move up as well and keep their inventory. Plop. See? Still there. So, let's go all the way up and send this cart off to its final destination. See you, cart. That was fun. But, yes, that is pretty much the end of this mod spotlight. I do, I do love the elevators. I wish that they were a little bit smoother, but... Hey, I can settle for this. It is pretty fast. All I have to do is hold right click and you go up and down a lot faster than climbing a ladder. I just wish that this wouldn't break every single time. <laughs> and you can make these elevators look pretty nice too. For example, this. Very nice looking, although I did kind of make it go a little bit too high. Oh well, my mistake. Hope you guys enjoy this spotlight. 
As always, the link to the mod is going to be in the description, so if you want to check it out yourself, go ahead and click that link. If you like this video or any of my series, go ahead and click the like button. And don't forget to subscribe and fave. I will see you next time. Take care and goodbye.